Lord, I appreciate all He does for me. He's never done me nothing but good and never been anywhere but right where He needs to be when I am in need of Him. Amen. Never let you down. Never, never, never let you down. Always on time in our life. And uh, I want to lift His name up tonight. Praise God. Glad to have you here tonight. Appreciate uh, everybody. Uh, we're sorry we didn't get here a little early. We wasn't late, but we was close to late. And almost gave the pastor a heart attack. But <laughs> Amen. I'm, i got to get used to this traffic around here again but uh, we're glad to have you here tonight and good to see the stamps is with us tonight amen appreciate them testify sister lisa uh-huh brother scott Appreciate them being here, and Justin's with us. Glad he's here tonight also. Got uh, Sister Wanda with us. Uh, Elami, don't ask me how to spell it. I know you won't, but we're appreciating her here tonight. She's going to sing for us tonight. Come right on. Going to sing uh, Brother Warren and mine's favorite song that she sings. Amen. Come on.
over yonder and there's too much to get to many. Amen. Too much to gain to lose. We're in this. It's not a uh, recreation hall. It is a battlefield. Amen. Right. The end time is upon us and here we are at the brink of the coming of the Lord and I want to be about doing all I can do. Amen. Still another soul to reach. Still another life to help. Still, people need something from the Lord. And we're here tonight in revival because we want to receive from the Lord and we want to be a blessing. Praise God. And uh, He knows everything about everybody at every time, and therefore He knows how to take care of our lives. Amen. May God bless you tonight. Thank you for the offering. Appreciate it so much. And uh, we just say thank you. Amen. Help me here tonight in John chapter 4. Get those two sweet. Pardon right here. Both of them up. Okay, thank you. Amen. John chapter 4. Help me tonight. And uh, we'll begin reading verse 1. If you love the Lord, say amen. amen. All right. If you hate that rascal devil, say amen. amen. Oh, yes. God is in love with us, and He's done everything it takes to get us where we need to be. Amen. All right. John chapter 4, verse 1. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus Himself baptized not, but His disciples. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And He must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh He to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey, set thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou being a Jew askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest, the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Praise God. I want to preach tonight on the woman and the seventh man. Praise God. Leaving Judea, heading northward toward Galilee, Jesus is nearing Samaria, and He was told by the disciples that you don't need to go that way. There's a better way. The devout Jews looked upon the Samaritans with content. I mean, they did not like them. The twelve told him, said, reach Galilee another way. But Jesus said, I must needs. Amen. 
I must needs go through Samaria. Or I have a divine appointment. I have got a mission that must be accomplished. The reason the disciples were reluctant because the Jews and the Samaritans had racial differences. They fought one another. They feuded. When the Babylonian exile had happened, they put the Jews into slavery. But they took captive the best minds, the doctors, the lawyers, and the educated. And they left Jerusalem, the weaklings, the diseased, and the handicapped. So while these stranger ones were in exile in Babylon, they maintained to keep their bloodstream pure. But the weaklings, amen, they mixed married and they were breeded different cultures and different other nationalities. And so when Persia captured the Babylonian Empire, Cyrus, the king of Persia, he gave a mandate that all these Jews could go back home. And so the Jerusalem, they went. They packed their bags and they went back. The pure Jews feuded and fought with this mixed breed and they ran them off to Samaria. For centuries they fought one another. They despised one another. So the twelve didn't want to pass through this location. And so they said, we must needs, he said to them, I must needs go through Samaria. I've got a mission. I've got a purpose. I've got a goal. And he was was not just a man. This was not just a human being. This was God's only begotten Son. This was the Son of Man, the Son of God. He was human, but yet divine at the same time. And He says to the disciples, I've got to go through there because I have a mission to restore a soul, to re assure a life, to rekindle a spark, to rebuild and to revive. And all of God's Son's missions were not, amen, impossible, but they were all possible. And so arriving, He sits upon the well in the city of Sakar and near Samaria. And this happens to be Jacob's well. And at the sixth hour, which was noon time, He sets there a thirst and weary. Amen. And then the Bible said, There cometh a woman. Amen. The master is sitting on the well. The well is sitting on the well. The answer is sitting on the well. Amen. The only help for her is sitting on the well. The Lamb of God slain from the foundations of the world is sitting on the well. Praise God. And the Bible said there cometh a woman. Amen. She's not too old nor is she too young. She's not ugly. She must be attractive. She has had five husbands and you can't be ugly. I don't believe and have that many. Can you say amen? My. Amen. And she says, give me to drink. Imagine this. Jesus asked a stranger, amen, for a drink of water. And he's the one that made the water back in time, amen, in eternity when he was just the Word. And the Bible said he was the voice of many waters. And the seas rolled back in the cup of his hand. He was the water of life and he knows everything about everybody and he's the one who says I need some water hallelujah here he is the savior of the world God's son right here talking to a woman that's in dire need can I tell you that God will buy stuff that's like trash and recycle it through his purified blood and become a treasure 
pleasure. Amen. Amen. He may find a drunk. Amen. But it won't be long. He will be singing the praises when God gets done with him. It may be in the honky tonk from a bar stool to the church pew. But there's going to be a change. And they're going to be shouting the victory. It may be a cursing, cussing sailor. But when God gets done and goes through the cycle of the blood, amen, they're going to be telling the story and singing the song and talking in an unknown tongue because Almighty God will go out of His way, amen, to get a hold of your life and to turn things around. Can you say amen? He's still the same tonight and He's never changed. Praise God. Ah, oh, but Jesus sees sadness in her eyes. He sees that her life is nothing and that she's lost all concern about herself. She has no hope. She is rough. She's been used and abused. She is rugged. Yet here Jesus starts His work in a place that He only came through one time. Amen. Now assuming about her, let me say... She wouldn't be in who's who. Amen. Assuming about her, let me say, she wouldn't be in the church choir. Amen. She probably lives on Skid Row. She probably is a prostitute, no doubt, with many customers. Amen. She's poor. She's a homebreaker. She's selfish. She's living in sin. She has no business. Amen. Being anything but what she is, and she's lost. But you see, Jesus wasn't like a lot of human beings. Jesus wasn't like a lot of Christians. He was not just a look at her. He was not just an examiner. He was not just somebody that is judgmental. He looked beyond the sin and beyond the filth and beyond the degradation. And he looked into her heart and he seen that she needed something. I'm glad for that song. He looked beyond my faults and he saw my need. Hallelujah. When I was headed for hell, he picked up the pieces for me and gave me something worth shouting about. I'm glad that God knows it all tonight. Can you say amen? Has God ever tapped you on the shoulder and said, Can I have your attention? Amen. God will show up in your most treacherous time when you've had your worst day and everything has went wrong and everything looks bad and your temperament has declined and hatefulness maybe got a hold of you. God will show up and say, I love you. I appreciate you. I'm going to work with you. I'm not going to abandon you. You messed up your prayer time. You forgot your fast day. You got too busy. You messed up and missed church. Amen. And you know what God says to the angels when He sees somebody like that in Fort Worth, Texas? He turns to the angels and says, Pardon me. I've got to stop making some worlds right now. I've got to visit a wayward person. Amen on Blue Mound Road tonight. Now I wonder what does the angels think about that when God leaves the glory world and helps a stray person and a stray sheep. God says, hey angels, I'm more interested in people than I am making galaxies and Milky Ways. He'll put 10,000 worlds on the back burner, praise God, and say, I'm more interested in in souls than I am the stars. For all the stars can do is shine and become meteorites and burn out. But he says souls, they can grow and they can confound the wise when use their volition and their will and they can offer praise and worship unto me. I'm telling you tonight that Almighty God will go out of His way to meet your need. Oh, hallelujah. 
Oh, he sees something in this gal that a lot of us would have never seen. And he says to her, Give me water that I may drink. He already owns the cattle of a thousand hills. Amen. He already has the world in the palm of his hand. He's already flung the world from nothing to nowhere back into space and told it to stay there. He governs all that exists and all that is guided. He will guide them. He pilots our ship and the helm of our life. Amen. He picks us up and redirects us and cares about us. But here, he is striking up a conversation with a woman at the well. Jesus never drinks here. He was the well sitting on the well. Amen. But it was back in creation when he held the waters in the helm of his garments and he scooped up amen all the seas and he formed amen everything that exists it was in Canaan that he turned the H2O into wine that they could have something to drink and Jesus says the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritan she said and Jesus said if thou knewest the gift of God and who it is that saith unto thee he can give you living water. Amen. Drink the purest water that you can find. Amen. But you'll thirst again. Amen. He was the bottomless well. He was spring that never runs dry. He was the springing one up to everlasting life. When you meet Jesus, you'll never be the same again. When you meet God's Son, you'll never be the same again. Can you say them? Carves the rivers by his finger, pushed up the mountains, walked on the water, turned the water into wine, turned it into blood, made it like a frozen wall for the Israelites to walk across, melted it down upon Pharaoh and all of his children and all the chariots. I'm telling you, if he can do that, he can help a wayward soul on Blue Mountain Road. Say amen. Oh my. Solomon is known as having wisdom. Amen. Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. Does that sound like wisdom? <laughs> Somebody said that's 1,000 headaches. That's according to how you deal with them. <laughs> Come on now. It would have took him all night to kiss them all good night. 1,000. <laughs> oh my 360 days in the Jewish calendar if he spent one day with each one it'd take two years and nine months and one week and three days amen I'm telling you that takes some wisdom to handle that amen but you know what the heart can't be satisfied with the things of this world because the heart is where God puts immortality. Corruption can't satisfy that which is incorruptible. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. Hallelujah. I want to tell you something here tonight. I am not here because I've got great faith. I am not here because I don't have doubt. I am not here because I don't have failure. I am here because I've got a God that went out of His way when I was 13 years of age and He convicted me of my sins and saved my soul. And He put His loving arms around me and He takes care of my problems and my trials and amen the tears of sorrow. It's God's nature to help and to heal and to feel. Amen. And God never quits on 
on you when you make a mistake. He don't quit on you. He doesn't turn his back on you. He don't vote you down. He don't shove you under the carpet. He don't count you out. He's with us and for us. And God fights our battles. I will never leave thee, nor will I forsake thee. I'll be with you even to the end of the world. Can you say them? God's silence doesn't mean that He's abandoned you. Never. He has His own timetable. He has His own schedule and own agenda. God doesn't have to give you explanations for everything. God's silence is to develop your faith that you can serve Him better than you ever have. And underneath that greatest trial and underneath that biggest problem and underneath your worst failure and discouragement he said when I fall the Lord the Lord shall raise me up he's a God that will go all the way can you say man oh hallelujah oh this woman met the best man she could ever meet She said, Sir, give this, give me this water. Jesus said, You go call thy husband. Now Jesus here is focusing in on her sins. Shocking her conscience. Until God makes aware your sins, He can never get to your heart. Never get to your heart. He cues in on her, if you please. And she says in verse 17, I have no husband. You see, she is out of instinct guarding and protecting the skeletons in her closet. She does the big cover-up and throws up a defense. You see, you can't deceive Jesus. Oh my. Amen. Just yourself is all you can deceive. He knows it all and understands it all. Lying is deceiving and deceiving is lying. And Jesus said in verse 17, Lady, thou hast well said I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands and she's living with one the sixth man in her life the sixth man could not help her but Jesus was the seventh man in her life and he came on the scene praise God oh I could just see this lady you see a lot of us we just say forget her a lot of us, we'd say, it's no good. You can't help people till you show them their sin. You cover up and galvanize it, he'll judge you for it. But some people want you to just let everything go. Hey Amen. But you can't do that and get help. Oh, no. I could see her. She probably lived in a bad home, no doubt. Assuming at 13 years of age she might have gotten married maybe to a 31-year-old man. And by the time now that she's 18, he's too old for her. She now marries a younger man, a man at 23. And he, she's 23, he's younger now. He's too immature for her. Now she wants an educated man, so she finds an educated man by the time she's 28. And she finds out then that you cannot buy everything you want with just an educated man. And so she marries a rich man by the time she's 33. And she finds out that she some things money just cannot buy. Oh my. Amen. And Jesus just comes right in where she's at and says, listen here, you are shacking up. You are not right in so many words. Your sins are a hold of you. Jesus got her to admit her sins. He got her to confess her sins. She was traveling fool's hill. Everybody body just let her go by and Satan had her convinced and her friends had her 
were deceived and they both agreed her and Jesus in verse 18 he said in that thou saidest thou truly amen Jesus said we got this thing together right and he told her said woman believe me and verse 22 he said salvation is of the Jews he said worship the father in the spirit he said I know when Christ comes she said amen he will tell us all things and Jesus said in verse 26 I that speak unto thee am he oh hallelujah she rolled out and Christ came in she opened up and the Savior came in she had a new walk she had a new talk she was a new person in Christ Jesus she found out old things are passed away and all things have become new hallelujah her water pots went one way and she went the other way I'm telling you that God takes care of business and he knows us can you say them oh my I've never found him to do me nothing but good I've never found him but to be right on time for everything in my life amen I want to tell you tonight some of you here tonight you have no right being here You have no right being alive. You have no right being saved except for the seventh man full of mercy and full of grace. He, some of you may have been drug addicts and died that way in a stupor of sin. Some of you may have been living in motels and never had jobs and every evil force a hold of your life. Oh, but God said, I'm going to go out of my way. And he sent the hounds of heaven and the angels of mercy and got a hold of you and picked you up out of the muck and out of the mire and gave you life. Hallelujah. I've had times when God was furthest from my mind. Amen. And he would swoop right down. Amen. And get a hold of me and shake me a little bit. And I'd realize, oh God, you're still God and you always will be God. God don't want to take you out. He wants to take you in. Amen. God goes out of his way when you wander out of the way. God will never, amen, leave you alone. He'll wave a red lantern at the mouth of hell to turn you back and to get you where you need to be. Hallelujah. He's still the same. Can you say amen? Amen. Verse 28 said, She saith to the men. She went back to her customers and said, Come and see a man which told me all things of my life. Her mission was to tell about Jesus. And she told her customers about the divine customizer outside of town at Jacob's well. Hallelujah. I could see her running and telling the story of the Lord. She came to the carpenter and said, put down your saw and put down your hammer. The door of life is out there at Jacob's well. She came to the shepherd and said, put down your staff and lay it down because the shepherd of all humanity, amen, is outside of town. She came to the law office and told the lawyer, said, listen, Put down the book of law For the word of God Is outside of town She went down to the funeral home And said put down the embalming flood The resurrection and the life Is outside of town Went to the basement
bakery and told the baker, put the dough down, praise God. The bread of life is outside of town. He's come to save. He's come to seek. He's come to rescue. She went to the fruit market and said, listen, the apple of my eye, and I'm the apple of his eye. He's outside of town, here to help somebody. He, she went to the forest and said, the rose of Sharon, the lily of the valley, the plant of renown, your only help, your only love to get you to heaven is outside of town. To the water department she goes and says, hey, we're tired of these big water bills in Tarrant County. Amen. The water of life is outside of town, springing up to everlasting life. He'll give you a drink that you'll never have to thirst again. Went to the meat market and said, listen here, the Lamb of God that was slain from the foundations of the world, He's outside of town and He's come to lift you up. He's come to inspire you and to calm your fears and to take over. Save Him. I could see her when He first told her and she felt the change in her life. If it had been in our day, she might have sang something like this. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I can see her walking down the road to go tell about Him singing that song. No one ever cared for me like Him. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. Can you remember the night you got saved? Can you remember the night He turned your life around? Can you remember the night that you met Him on the broad road of destruction? I'm talking about the Abel. I'm talking about the Abba Father. I'm talking about the bridge over troubled water. I'm talking about the begotten of the Father, the Comforter, the Courage, the Doctor, the divine. Amen. The everlasting, ever loving friend that will do for you what nobody else will do. Amen. The good, the great, the grateful, the honey out of a rock, the high priest after the order of Meshazadek, the I am, the eternal, the Emmanuel, Jesus, the Jehovah, the King. Amen. The Lord of glory, the majesty that mystifies, the overcoming power, the provider, the quick sharp sword that gets a hold of your life. I'm afraid that many times we forget where we came from and we get to forget what he done for us. Oh my. America is the greatest nation in the world. And while all other nations are in revival, we're not. What a shame. So what that tells us is that we have to have the communists to take over for us to get spiritual. That's what it tells us. We have to have all ungodliness to break loose and we lose our conveniences and we lose our cars and we lose our jobs. Oh, yes! Oh, we'll pray then. That's our problem in this country. You go to a foreign country, 80,000 come to hear you preach. 
20,000, 10,000, 200,000, 25,000 people a day get the Holy Ghost in China because they're hiding to have church. There's no pews and no chairs because there's nowhere to sit. It's crammed full of people. But oh, here we are at ease in Zion in America, laid back. Everything's fine. Amen. Money in the bank. That's our problem today. Amen. We're so adjusted to this lifestyle. We've lost a passion for God and a passion for the church. We forget that we were once, amen, the woman at the well. We forget that we were once the runaway slave. We forget that we were once like Peter lying and denying. We forget it. And we lose the drive for God. We lose it down here. We're too busy, too involved, going too much, not praying enough, not getting on our knees enough. Oh my, some people only pray Wednesday night and that's a poly one a cracker five minute prayer in the altar. They never pray Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday and Saturday and they only pray on Sunday morning and Sunday night. I know people that do that. Hey man, you can see people's lives and realize they're not where they need to be. You can fool a lot of people but you can't ever fool the preacher. Hey man, because God lets him know the score. Why? So you can get help. So you can come out of it. So you can make it where you need to be in God. Amen. He's too good to us. Too good to us. Charlotte, come for me here. Amen. A man was living in Indiana. He was a backslider. Raised in Cumberland, Kentucky. He had to go for business back down to Cumberland, Kentucky. And he went down there. His wife had served God all those years that he was backslid. And he abused her and he beat up on her. He got drunk. He was a drunkard. He'd come in nearly every weekend drunk and whip her and pass out. And she'd pray over him and put him in bed and... Just take care of him. And she just kept trusting God and trusting God. But he goes down for business to Cumberland, Kentucky. When he did, the church where he used to go and was raised was in homecoming revival. When he got down there, the family members and friends said, Oh, you need to come to revival. You need to come to the revival. He said, No, no, I don't, I don't want to go. But sure enough, on Friday night, he showed up. Came to the revival that night. Sit in the back and the preacher preached. Conviction was in the house. Holy Ghost came on that place. That man began to weep and cry and made his way up the aisle. And come down to an old-fashioned altar of salvation. Prayed through converted turned around now he's saved he made it back home but you see everybody don't make it back everybody don't make it back he went into the fellowship hall and people were still praising the Lord and he got in there and he said I need to call my wife and tell her what's happened tell her the good news I said right there at the food bar right there is a the phone you can call her he went over there and dialed the number, called her back in Indiana, 350-some miles away. When she answered, he said, Honey, you ain't going to believe what's happened. She thought, Oh, Lord, what's he done now? Oh, my. She was shook up for a few moments. And he told her the story that he went to church that night and got saved. People begin to rejoice and she began to rejoice and just thanking God and praising the Lord and she was crying and they were just telling how much they loved each other. And she said, Honey said, take your right shoe off. And he said, I didn't hear you just right, darling. What'd you say? He said, Take your right shoe off, she said. He said, Well, I'm I'm in the fellowship hall. Go ahead and do it. She took that right shoe off and she said, now reach down in the heel part of it and raise that flap up. 
And sure enough, he did. He raised that up. He seen a page out of the Bible. It was a page out of the book of John. She said, you remember that time two months ago, this one particular night where you beat me up and you passed out. He said, I'm so sorry, honey, I did that. She said, well, that night when I prayed over you like I did every night that you came in, said, God said, put that page in there and let him walk around on me a while. He said, darling, ever since that night, he said, I have been horrified. I've been disturbed so bad. Now I know what it was all about. You see, God went out of his way 350 miles away for a little lady that said, I'm not giving up. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to pray. I'm going to believe God that he can get in, that he can make it. Hallelujah. And the Lord went out of his way and saved that man all the way down in Kentucky. Ah, listen to me tonight. The seventh man is your only answer when you have problems and troubles and you're down or you're backslid or you're wrecked your life and you don't know where to turn and the counselor can't help you. Amen. And all the workshops and tapes and all of them can't help you. He can do it tonight. Every head bowed, eyes are closed. Oh, my Lord, the seventh man, he'll take care of business for your life. Oh, hallelujah, he's able right now to give you life eternal and to turn the tables on everything. Oh, God, hallelujah. Why don't you pray tonight if you're lost and away from God, you can be saved right now. Amen. You can find the Lord to be the Lord of your life. How about it? Woman at the well. What about it? I was seeking. Oh yes. For things that could not satisfy. That never shall run dry. Oh, yes. Fill my cup, Lord. What about you tonight? You need something from the Lord. It up, Lord. You may not be backslid tonight. You just may need something from God. You're saved tonight. You want the Lord to give you Or you might be backslid and you need God to turn the tide for you tonight. Of heaven. He's able to do it. Feed me till I want no more. Fill oh. my cup. Let him fill your cup tonight. Fill it up. Let and him make help you in this service. Whole. How about you right now? You'd like to pray. If somebody needs something from God. I somebody tonight up, Lord. we were here. You've got a problem you cannot take care of. You've got a situation you cannot secure. I'm telling you, Jesus can do it for you tonight. Oh, everybody, let's stand. Everybody stand. Feed me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Here's my cup. Fill it up. Fill it up. Oh, hallelujah. You want to come first because you got something you want God to take care of tonight. Amen. He's available. He'll give you what you need in this service. Amen. Anybody else right now feel like you need to come for a special prayer that God could take care of things? Oh, yes. Bread of heaven. Tonight, no, the problem no. solvers here tonight. Here's my cup. Oh, hallelujah! Jesus, Jesus. All right, church, everybody, let's come and pray. Everybody, come. Oh, at the well, I was oh, seeking. Yes. Have your way. Oh, 
could not satisfy Then I heard my Savior speaking Draw from the well That never shall run dry Fill my cup, Lord I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup. Fill it up and make me whole. Like the woman at the well, I was seeking for things that could not satisfy. Lord, oh, I lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting of my soul, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more, fill my cup. Fill it up and make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting of my. Fill it up and make